Necrotizing anterior colitis is a syndrome of intestinal injury and is the most common acquired GI emergency in the newborn. Its pathogenesis is complex and multifactorial. Our understanding of the pathophysiology is increasing. Current clinical practice is directed toward proper early diagnosis and rapid institution of proper intensive care management. Necrotizing enterocolitis occurs in 1 to 3 per 1,000 lift births and 1 to 8 percent of admissions to the neonatal intensive care unit. Prematurity is the most significant factor associated with neonatal neck. The disease occurs in 4 to 13 of infants who weigh less than 1,500 grams at birth. Neck is infrequent in term infant, less than 10% of the affected infants. In full term infant, it occurs in association with polycythemia, congenital heart disease, or birth asphyxia. The pathogenesis of necrotizing anterior colitis is multifactorial, ischemia, immaturity, microbial dysbiosis, proliferation of pathogenic bacteria with less colonization with beneficial or commensal bacteria, and genetics are all thought to play a role. Prematurity is associated with immaturity of the gastrointestinal tract, including decreased integrity of the intestinal mucosa, depressed mucosal enzymes, suppressed gastrointestinal hormone, suppressed intestinal host defense system, decreased coordination of intestinal motility, and differences in blood flow autoregulation, which is thought to play a significant role in the pathogenesis of necrotizing enterocolitis. What is the relation between the enteral feeding and the necrotizing enterocolitis? More than 90% of infants diagnosed with necrotizing enterocolitis have been fed enterally, but necrotizing enterocolitis have been reported in infants who have never been fed. Feeding with human milk has shown a beneficial role in reducing the incidence of necrotizing enterocolitis. In addition, probiotics may offer potential benefits for the preterm infant by increasing mucosal barrier function, improving nutrition, upregulating the immune system, and reducing mucosal colonization by potential pathogens. Moreover, compromised intestinal blood flow may contribute to neck. Early clinical signs of neck include abdominal distension, feeding intolerance, increased gastric residuals, emesis, rectal bleeding, and occasional diarrhea. As the disease progresses, patients may develop marked abdominal distension, bilious emesis, ascites, abdominal wall erythema, lethargy, temperature instability, increased episodes of apnea, bradycardia, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and shock. With abdominal perforation, the abdomen may develop a bluish discoloration. This is how it starts with distension, followed by erythema, which if not treated, ends up with intestinal perforation. The white blood cell count can be elevated, but often it's depressed. Thrombocytopenia is common. In addition, infants may develop coagulation abnormalities along with metabolic derangement, including metabolic acidosis, electrolyte imbalance, and hypoglycemia, sometimes hyperglycemia. No unique infectious agent has been associated with neck. Bacteriologic and fungal cultures may be helpful, but not conclusive. 
Radiographic imaging is essential to diagnose neck. The earliest radiographic finding is intestinal ileus, often associated with thickening of the bowel loops as seen in figure A. The pathognomonic radiographic finding is nematosis intestinalis, seen in figure B. This is caused by hydrogen gas production from pathogenic bacteria present between the subserosal and muscularis layers of the bowel wall. Radiographic findings also may include affected or persistent dilated lobe of bowel, intrahepatic gas as seen in figure C, and nemoperitoneum which occur in case of bowel perforation as seen in figure D. It's not an easy job to differentiate neck from sepsis with intestinal ileus or evolvulus. Both conditions can present with systemic signs of sepsis and abdominal distension. The absence of nematosis on abdominal radiographs doesn't rule out the diagnosis of neck. Other causes of abdominal distension and perforation, like gastric or ileal perforation, should be considered. Patients diagnosed with Hirsch-Sprung enterocolitis or severe gastroenteritis may present with nematosis intestinalis. Neck is considered a surgical issue because even with aggressive and appropriate medical management, about 25 to 50 percent of infants with neck require surgical intervention. Consultation with a pediatric surgeon should be done early with a suspicion of neck, and this should not delay starting medical measures, which includes discontinuation of enteral feedings, gastrointestinal decompression with nasogastric tube, fluid and electrolyte replacement, total parental nutrition, and systemic broad spectrum antibiotics. Surgery is indicated when nemoperitoneum is observed, rapid clinical deterioration despite medical therapy, rapid onset and progression of nematosis, abdominal mass or intestinal obstruction. The surgical procedure initially with primary peritoneal drainage followed by surgical intervention when the infant is stable and a laparotomy can be performed safely.